In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The theme that runs through today is the compassionate love of God. The compassionate love of God. God the Creator, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit. The compassionate love of God. And it really starts out with that entrance hymn, one of the best additions to the new hymnal, strong hymn, talking about the love of Christ, the love of Christ who was crucified on that cross as an expression to the entire world that God, Creator, Jesus Christ, God was willing to embrace all of the hate, all of the evil, all of the meanness, all of the pain of the world, to embrace all of that into his crucified arms. That's the extent to which the compassion of love is issued, issued to all of us. Compassionate love. And it's picked up in the, in the colic which we just read. Have compassion on our weakness. And it goes on to say, God, you know what we need. You know that we're weak. You know that we're not worthy. But, but, but give us what we need if only we can listen and receive that which you are giving to us. And in the, in the Old Testament, uh, God chose David for an important role in the faith journey of the Jews. David was not the perfect character. But David did turn to God again and again, and God loved David as if David were his son. And David, in the Psalms, or in his language, or in whatever, often referred to God as father. There was, there was compassion there between God and David. And in Ephesians, Paul, who was famous for this kind of talk, talked about the compassionate love of Jesus Christ, of the risen Christ. For through that, the hostility between Jews and Gentiles, circumcised and uncircumcised, the hostility which was quite, quite harsh and quite painful, could be healed, and that, that both those groups of humanity could in fact feel loved by God. The whole point of bringing healing into the world through the compassionate love of God. And then of course in the Gospel, in the Gospel, which is really, really a great little scene, um, it's actually a beginning and an ending of a longer passage, and in the middle, which we don't hear, is the feeding of the 5,000, but that's important. That's what's, that's what's right there. But, but what we see in the first part of that reading is that uh, uh, the apostles, those are the disciples who have, been, who have been, become apostles because they were sent forth into the world, um, but, but those apostles were gathered and sort of checking back in with Jesus, and Jesus said, um, I can tell you're tired. I can tell you need a break. Let's go off into a deserted place, a quiet place, and have something to eat. I mean, he could, he could feel the need of those apostles and responded with some suggestion and some activity. And of course, what happened is that in the midst of that, Jesus became aware of the needs of the masses who saw him with his apostles and came and said, Heal us, teach us. And Jesus had compassion for them. That's what it says, says in Scripture, because they seemed like sheep without a shepherd. And so he changed directions again to say, this sounds like a greater need right now. These people are lost, and I need to teach them. I need to give them some grounding for their lives. And so that's what he did. And then later on, he also fed them physically. Our God is compassionate, and we need to never forget that. 
because it's really a starting point for us and a continuing point throughout our faith journeys. In this baptism, when we baptize Preston over here, who's doing so fantastic, <laughs> keep it up, Preston. But there are going to be some questions which all of you will be asked, and, and you will answer, I will with God's help, that they're pretty tough questions. But I want, I want to point out a prayer. And I, I want to read this prayer. You're going to hear it later, and it's going to be really addressed to Preston. But I want us to hear it as if it were addressed to us, and actually that's how I'm going to read it, the last part. Give us an inquiring and discerning heart. That was Preston. The courage to will and to persevere. A spirit to know and to love you. And the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. And here's my point. I mean, if we did that, if we did that, there is no way that we could miss the compassionate love of God. Again, in whatever form it might come to us through Jesus or God the Creator. And if we really received that compassionate love, then would we be enabled, empowered, and inspired to do what God has called us to do in the world? Yes, God loves us. And in this busy life, we often forget it because there's so many important things to do. But it's something that we need to be reminded again and again throughout our lives. You might or might not know that St. James, the symbol of St. James is a shell like this, like this shell. And um, shells like this are often used in baptism where we pick up the water and place it on the person's head. And not not too long ago, I was standing right back there at the end of the liturgy after the sending sentences and everything, and a, and a couple walked up to me and said, um, our granddaughter wants to give you something. I said, okay. And she gave me a shell like that. I mean, it's big, it's sort of like this. And written in it, somebody had, with a magic marker had written, Jesus loves you. I said, okay. <laughs> and I bet, and I said, where did you get it? Where did you get it? She said, I found it on the beach. And I'm sure, I bet some youth group had a, had a, you know, a task to go out and you know, make these, sign these uh, shells and put them on the beach to let someone like that little girl discover it and then share it with somebody else. And so I'm putting that little shell, that shell is like, it's a big one. I'm putting it in my, my blue Tacoma four-wheel drive pickup truck. <laughs> So that when I'm driving around, I can be reminded about the compassionate love of Jesus for me. That's what we all got to do. And when we do that, we will joyfully do God's work in the world. Amen. <laughs>